Hello everyone, welcome back. We have the TWAB this week. We're gonna get right on into it. I don't waste too much of your time. Uh, I was a little bit late on this, but here we go anyway. This week at Bungie, we're prepping to make Saint 14 proud once more with this season's return of Trials of Osiris, showing off some nifty new ways to put your fashion spin on some beloved exotics and a deeper dive into recent airborne accuracy changes. Okay, based off that, I'm really interested to see the inner accuracy changes stuff because it needs fix, it's so bad. We've officially made it um, to week three of Season of the Haunted. We've seen some growth, some grinding, some dungeons, and if you're like me, you bawled your eyes out over a certain character that rhymes with flow. Wait, oh. Alongside a new story beat, players who had some more time to play around with Iron Banner's Rift mode, while the team continues taking in the feedback on the latest reiteration of this PvP experience, Valus Forge needs some time to clock out and not rank up that overtime. This, of course, means if Saint it's Saints 14's time to shine, once more with Trials of Osiris, and he's arriving bearing gifts of new armor and new weapons. But first, let's talk about one of the dominating con conversations happening over the past few weeks, our version of I Believe I Can Fly. Okay, up in the air. In a TWAB earlier this year, we dove deep, deep into the plethora of changes to Destiny 2 regarding how combat looks and feels in-game. That was a beefy TWAB, real beefy, so it's understandable that there still may be some lingering questions over particulars, including in airborne accuracy. The weapons team is back to offer up some additional insight. Let's dive right in. Weapons team, quick reminder of our stated goal for the airborne changes. Destiny has extremely fluid and expressive airborne movement, but that movement must be balanced against ground player, grounded players less to become oppressive. We want all players who enjoy that playstyle to be able to build into it, but they'll have to make tough choices about what they leave behind to do so. Successfully engaging in the air will no longer be as simple as put an Icarus Grip mod on, but the upside for heavily investing in it will be higher. We're putting together a detailed explanation on how Airborne Effectiveness, AE, interacts with aim assist and accuracy for players who love to dig into the details, but well, that's going to take a little longer than we wanted to address some points of confusion early. Firstly, the Season 17 patch notes included a line that incorrectly stated that all primary weapons have their airborne accuracy penalty removed. This should have been qualified as at 60 airborne effectiveness. All primary weapons have their airborne accuracy penalty removed. That said, at base, primary weapons generally shoot straighter while airborne than they did before. For example, the hand cannon base accuracy cone, aka air cone, Error angle is now 0.8 degrees compared to 0.97 last season, and you can now fully eliminate the airborne accuracy penalty, meaning your weapons will shoot as straight as they do while on the ground, which wasn't the case before. Note that even if the center of the accuracy cone is directed at a target, if your accuracy cone is wider than the target on your screen, any single projectile can still miss. For this reason, we recommend that you try to hit one of the important thresholds on a primary weapon. 30 AE, similar accuracy to pre-season 17, pre 17 Icarus grip, suitable for jump shots at mid-range. A hand cannon's accuracy cone at 30 AE is 0.48 degrees compared to 0.47 degrees last season with Icarus. 60 AE, fully removes the airborne accuracy's penalty and allows for more accurate, longer-range airborne shots. This is what bothers me. Is like they say that, but there's no way of like seeing airborne effectiveness in game. As far as I understand, I have not seen a single stat that lists airborne effectiveness. So I have no idea how to build into that because you can't see it. And if you can't see it, you can't build into it, or it's a lot harder to. Like there's some things that we know are gonna give us like some in air accuracy, right? So if we use things like Thorn and Necrotics, that's going to boost your in-air accuracy because they listed that in a previous TWAB, and that's just one I can remember. And we know that Stompies has minus 50 to in-air accuracy. Like, these are things that we know because, to me, those stood out, right? So it doesn't really make sense that, like, yeah, these have these in-air or in the in-air effectiveness, the airborne effectiveness, but it's hard to see and it's hard to understand how to build into it because nothing's really listed that says, this is your airborne stat, along with, like, your zoom and stuff. It's just not a thing. Keep in mind that special weapons are penalized more heavily while airborne than primary weapons and must get to 100 in air ac airborne effectiveness to eliminate the airborne accuracy penalty. Shotgun spread angle is heavily penalized at E0 AE. This penalty is reduced with higher AE and eliminated at 100. We're keeping an eye on feedback on airborne uh, gameplay in general and are looking into cases where players miss shots they feel like they should have hit. In these cases, it helps to know a lot to know exactly what the player's build was for the occurrence. So if you're posting a clip or making a comment, please also include the weapon with perks and mod 
exotic armor and any subclass build including aspects and fragments that you are running this should be in net in text or by making sure screenshots or videos shown the build elements. In Season 18 and beyond, we plan on giving players a few new ways to build into that stat, including making the visible stat in the weapon inspection screen and updating some exotic weapons that we felt could use a bump to AE. See, this is great. I'm glad they're doing this, but I don't understand. The, this is what bothers me. So, with the airborne effectiveness, you had... You, you bring this and you introduce this in the game, but you don't let us see it into for enough for three months. So there's no way for us to build into it, which means that airborne effectiveness, really, like you, unless you're like looking at outside resources that tell you what the airborne effectiveness is on said weapon and said gear, then there's no way of knowing how to build into it. It doesn't make any sense. Like I just don't, I just don't get it. Like you can't. I don't. I don't think it's very fair to do. Like, why season 18? Why I don't understand why they can't just, like, why didn't they just add that when the season came out? And it would have cleared up a lot of confusion. But what else is coming next? We'll have a small mid-season weapon balance update shipping with Solstice, which will include some buffs to weapon subfamilies that have been languishing for a while. A fix for certain special weapons not getting enough ammo per special brick for one defeat in PvP, and some tuning for oppressive exotic weapons. Beyond that, we're wrapping up production on the season 18 weapons in the matching balance update, while we'll be which will be of a standard appropriate size, no novels this time, some highlights, revisiting some weapon subfamilies, legendary perk and exotic weapon tuning and adding intrinsic anti-barrier functionality to several exotic weapons. Test your metal trials of Osiris returns. So, test your metal trials Oh, I read that, sorry. If you're into the PvP side of Destiny 2, then you may have noticed that we have been playing around with some ideas concerning the more competitive side of this experience. With freelance zone captures and tweaking other odds and ends, have all played into a bigger version of for what Trials of Osiris could be. Now after a short break, Trials is back and comes bearing some sweet new armor to monkey around it. No, seriously, there's an actual monkey. Yes, there is. I don't know why they gave it to the Hunters. I feel like it would have suited better on the Titan, but I digress. I'm actually really, really happy with the Titan helmet, so I really want all the gear, um, especially for Titan and Warlock. Not so much the Hunter. The Baboon stuff's just a little much for me. With Trials back in action, the Lighthouse awaits. We've already revealed the new weapons on the way with the return of Trials, but just in case time has been a cruel memory stealer, here's what players can look forward to in addition to the armor seen above. Weapons, Forgiveness Sidearm, and the Burden of Gale Fusion Rifle, and the Sparrow Falcon's Chase. And a shiny new ghost shell that you can catch a glimpse of in the armor image above. Not a secret, but come on. Some things need to be a mystery. It's literally in the collections. I don't know how it's a mystery. This week's Trials of Osiris is the elimination, so good luck out there and make Saint-14 proud. And just because I've shown immense restraint by holding back dad jokes in recent twabs, I get a freebie. What do you need to open your new Trials Armor of Osiris? A monkey. Duh. Okay, bye. Okay. We flame to please. At the start of Season 17, we introduced players to Solar 3.0 and all the possibilities that comes with it. To add a little more team bonding into the mix, we add a few fragments that were kept a secret for the community to work together to uncover, as we knew you would. Everyone pulled together to take on the new Nightmare Containment activity, despite a few technical hiccups. You got the job done, fully unlocking these new puzzle pieces that make up a bigger fiery picture. For those fellow statistical nerds out there, here's a quick glimpse of the event in an answer to the most important question we've ever asked how many guardians does it take to blow up a light bulb so over 1.6 million players completed at least one nightmare containment during the event guardians average 13.8 nightmare containments per character i've done way more than that it's insane one dedicated player even completed over 390 nightmare containments over the course of the event in the first 24 hours one guardian successfully completed 78 nightmare containments that's insane that's impressive. Good work out there teaming up and getting the job done. In addition to the solar fragments unlocking, we also have a special emblem to commemorate that effective effort. You know, just because. To unlock the latest fashionable flair, head to thebungie.net slash redeem, which I will open later, and enter this handy dandy code T67JXYPH6, and you get that emblem. It's actually pretty clean. I, I'm a big fan of it. So, universally fashionable. In the Eververse, you'll see a few new legendary ornaments for class items that are undeniably cool looking if you ask me. But if you look a little closer, you'll notice a little exotic tie-in. Not only do these ornaments look stylish, but they also have an exotic synergy spe special effect. 
the latest fashion trend pairs with the original iteration of a few important exotic pieces. Which out what's new? Um, check out what's new below. Cloak of Thacris pairs with the Thacris helmet. Adds a stasis effect on the on the cloak's collar. Um, mantle. Of, I'm not gonna really get into these. We all know them. So, Pride Strike Team. Last week we shared a new addition to the Bungie store that allows for yet another way for Guardians to show off the love and pride they have for their communities. But Bungie's Pride 2.0 collectible pin is a beautiful way to share that pride with the rest of the world alongside the beautiful new prismatic emblem. Today we have our Pride Strike team that consists of people from all over the studio, including our Trans at Bungie Inclusion Club, to talk about some of the ways we celebrate Pride Month as a studio and as a community. There's even a fashion opportunity because you, you know we're suckers for those. Take it away, Pride Strike team. Okay, Pride Strike Team. Happy Pride Month, Guardians. As many of you know, Bungie is filled with the incredible diverse, diverse group of humans that help, that help in all aspects of creating this game. A bunch of us are members of the LGBTQIA plus community and together with some allies to see what we could do to share our everyday lives with the Destiny community. This year, we have a really fun and colorful ask of the community, but we think it's better requested with equal, equally colorful quotes. Robert V, show us your pride, Destiny fans. David S, show off your best Destiny LGBTQ plus headcanon. Um, Kaylani M, light is a spectrum. Why limit yourself to a single hue? Show us the rainbow, Guardians and Sam B. Show us your gay Destiny safe for work art, please. So to clarify what we're trying to say, we're asking you to show us your Destiny-themed pride art and those of the non-artist variety, never fear. We have something for you, too. Introducing Destiny Pride Edition. Show us your favorite Destiny fashion while wearing your trans emblem or pride emblem, and we will share our favorites. And if you are asking yourself, what do I get out of this? Well, a colorful sense of community and inclusion. Pride Month is incredibly important to us here, not just as Bungie employees, but also as people. Because of this, we have a few more celebrations on the horizon, so keep an eye out on Bungie comms throughout the month of June to see what we've got cooking up next. Love the Bungie, the Bungie Pride Strike Team. Player Support Report. This week, our Player Support Team has been diving deep into the various reports players have been sharing with the dev team, including some updates on ongoing issues that are currently being investigated. This week's portion centers around PlayStation 4 user reports around silver, artifice, armor, mod slot bugs, and an update on what has been successfully patched. As investigations continue in various topics, here's what player support has for the community this week thus far. PlayStation 4 Silver Sync. We are continuing to work with Sony's team regarding issues that may be causing players to encounter missing licenses, delayed silver purchases, or incorrect silver balances on the PlayStation 4. To read more on incorrect silver balance errors, please click here. Players should stay tuned to Bungie Help for updates. Artifice Armor Mod Clarification. With the release of Hotfix 4.1.0.2, we have particular we have Partially resolved an issue causing Artifice Armor to lose the Artifice mod slot at the start of Season 17. Newly acquired Artifice Armor will now successfully have the mod slot available. However, we are continuing to investigate a fix for existing armor pieces that previously lost their Artifice mod slot. 4.1.0.2 resolved issues. Earlier this week, Hotfix 4.1.0.2 was released to the world. Below is a list of some of the issues that were revolved with this Hotfix. Enhanced bait and switch no longer activated upon shooting enemies with all three equipped weapons. The Trespasser exotic weapon was unavailable to reacquire from collections. When in the tower, character previews may appear extremely zoomed in. So, Iron Banner Challenges. We are currently investigating Iron Banner Challenges ending earlier than we intended. Weekly reset. Players will still be able to progress and complete challenges during the next Iron Banner later in the season. Guardian Games Emblem. Players who qualified for the Tower's Finest Triumph can now claim the Guardian, Guardian Games' Glory Claim Emblem from Bungie Rewards. The deadline to claim the emblem is July 7th, 2022. I did get mine. It is awesome. Known Issues. While we continue investigating various known issues, here's a list of the latest issues that were reported to us in our hashtag help form. Callus Mini Tool and Drang Baroque don't get gold masterwork borders after upgrading to two enhanced traits. Shaw's Osiris Gear may have the flawless glow enabled by default when a player has not gone flawless. Item tool tips disappear when players dismantle items in the postmaster without moving their cursor. I have seen that. The Pyretic Footfalls ornament for the Path of the Burning Steps exotic appears in the Phoenix Cradles ornament section. Sometimes step four of the Iron Banner Forging Iron Quest didn't complete when obtaining Iron Banner ingrams from Lord Saladin's inventory the achievement slash trophy for unlocking subclasses no longer completes the iron banner crucible intro does not display any character stats or player stats bells in the duality dungeon can be activated with splash damage i'm so glad that's getting fixed 
at some point, by the way. How many times have I died to that? I don't even know. Some players can get trapped inside the gauntlet obstacle course in certain sever missions, blocking them from obtaining rewards. We're investigating an issue causing players to be unable to use Synth Weave to unlock new armor synthesis ornaments from the appearance customization menu. Players can work around this issue by unlocking the armor, or armor ornaments via individual armor previews quickly after selecting to preview their appearance. So, for a list of emergent new issues in Destiny 2, players can review our known issues article. Players who observe other articles should report them to our help forum. And we have movies of the week. We're not really going to watch them, but they're really cool, obviously. Boom, boom, boom. And art of the week. Ooh, very nice, very nice, and very nice. As always, oh, and we're now delivering, or we're now delving into week three of Season of the Haunted, and this week's storyline gets intense. If you haven't experienced it already, we recommend getting some tissues, maybe some comfort food too, just to be safe. With Trials of the Osiris live this week and our recently mentioned changes to how Solar 3.0 feels, when fighting that good fight, we are keeping a close eye on feedback from the community as we continue experimenting with all aspects of Destiny 2. We appreciate all the feedback that we value in continued and respectful conversation. In the meantime, get in there and play around with some of the new build types. Explore some of what activities like Nightmare Continuum and Sever have to offer. And don't forget to drink your water and take your vitamins. Until next time, stay kind and go give Zavala a big old hug for me. I should go hippie. So that is it for the TWAD, ladies and gentlemen. We're just going to leave that picture up here. I hope you all enjoyed this video and enjoyed the TWAB. Uh, I'm still a little disappointed with the inner accuracy changes, but I, at least we have a few more clarifications when it comes to trials tomorrow. I would have liked to know what the map is, but it is what it is, I guess. Um, but that's all I really have for today, guys. If you enjoyed today's TWAB reading, please leave a like and subscription. I'll really help the channel grow, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.